Hey now, welcome to episode 7 of Lodestar Mini Restoration. Um, I had to modify my rotisserie again uh, because it wasn't working to my level of satisfaction, but it is now. So this episode's to finalize the rotisserie and my bracing for removing the entire floor pan. Uh, but before I do, just to, just to give everybody an idea, I have it working rather well. So here she is. There she is. So she's working rather well. Everything's attached solid, so we're good to go. Um, let's see here. Before I get started, I just have to show a few things. Um, but no, this episode is going to be for a few tips because I know there's a couple people that are building their own rotisseries. Uh, may not be for a mini, maybe for a Jaguar or something else. However, um, maybe some of the principles will be the same for whatever the shell is because it took me a while to figure this daggum thing out, really. And I had to modify it because it was built for American cars. It wasn't built for a mini shell with a low center line of gravity. So I had to modify it. But before I do, um, let me see here. I want to show you a few things. Uh, just a, a couple, a couple shout outs. I just had a little fun with this, so um, I hope you guys don't mind. But so from people that I've learned from and or have made suggestions, uh, because I am an open book at this point, I've got a lot to learn. Um, I've just, I've just put your name down here. As, as just a, a thank you and a reminder my, to myself from who I learned from, who, who recommended it or who I saw or learned it from. Um, so this bar here, I go from the B post to the A post. Uh, I think uh, Mini Tom was the first one to uh, recommend that. So I've got him on this one. And then if you come around here, I believe uh, the gentleman's uh, motor racing team also suggested the same thing and so I have their name here on the right hand side now for the um, uh, preventing scissor action I have the mini man shed the mini man shed bar who goes from basically it goes from cross beam to cross beam um, to prevent scissors and then as I was watching John A. Lott and his father working on their shell, I noticed they made a, an alignment tool uh, for their floor pan. And so that I kind of picked up from John and his father. So, A. Lott, the A. Lott beam. So here I've got, you know, uh, mini Tom beam, mini man shed beam. Of course, I have the Dave Jaguar 66 beam. I have the A. Lott beam. Um, it, it's just a little bit of fun for me, guys. So I hope y'all don't mind. Um, but anyhow, thanks, guys. I appreciate any input. I appreciate the education. Uh, it's all good. So now um, let me get back to uh, the, the uh, rotisserie. The rotisserie. Uh, point one. The rotisserie, if you're making a rotisserie, first of all and foremost, the, the pivot axis right here, um, this guy has to be as close, ideally, on the center line of gravity of the shell. Now, for a mini, that center line, this is not perfect. However, this hole here, I'm not really sure what this hole is for. It might have been a tooling hole from the factory, and, and when they had to jig up on, 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 well, when they had to shell up on jigs and whatnot, because I, I don't remember this going to anything. However, the, the pivot line, I believe, is just above that. Um, Right now, my pivot point on my rotisserie is lined up with this, but I believe the real uh, center line of gravity is just above this hole. Um, so if you're building a rotisserie for a shell, mini shell, keep that in mind. Your pivot point needs to be um, on the center line. Now, my rotisserie has hydraulics, uh, the first stand, so I had, to, I had to set this guy up to that pivot point. And then I have a second line of fine tuning. This guy, I had to cut this beam down right here. Let's see. I had to, I had to cut uh, this down just so that I could work on the center line. Um, now, a couple points um, so that you know that you have your um, rotation balance close is that you know if 
like when you start, once you get it and you think you're there and you start to rotate it, if in this case, like I'm rotating and I have no, I mean, it, it'll go over by itself if I let it. Now, because it's harder to pull up, uh, I automatically know, I mean, it's, this isn't very hard, but there is, I, it takes more force to pull it up. I know that the shell is top heavy. So, yeah, it took a little bit more force to pull that up. So I know the shell is top heavy, so it's top heavy. So technically, I would want to lower the shell down. I can't lower this thing any more than it really is because of, I can't modify this any more than I already have. Um, but so if, if, if it's harder to pull, like right now, if it were harder to pull here, then I know that it would be bottom heavy and I would know that the shell needs to go upward. Um, so those are just tips that uh, I had to figure out along the way. The main tip is this, this pivot point right here um, needs to be in line as close as possible. Here, you can see it better. Um, this hole right here is possibly pretty doggone close to the shell center line of gravity. Um, so anyhow, maybe that'll help you, maybe not. Um, I did find out that I did need these gussets. I have these gussets that run from my support beams down to the uh, firewall of the shell. I did need those. Those actually helped put this in. I also added my, um, what I call the Dave Jaguar 66 center beam. That basically helps. I think it helps keep the two rotisserie ends together. Um, but I think it does help a little bit with the flexing of the two ends. Um, it, it definitely helps because this thing now stays center. Uh, one thing to consider if you are uh, building your own rotisserie, I didn't have a choice. However, you can see the center beam that connects the front end rotisserie to the back end. It runs along the floor. Mine is right down the center of the car. I've seen others where they run from this end here to the other end and it makes a box section on the floor. That, I think maybe that's just a really preference more than anything. Um, if you have it in the center, then you know that you have to raise the shell up accordingly. That is like eight or nine inches off the floor. This point right here is about eight or nine inches off the floor. So I have to raise the shell up a little bit more just to rotate it. It's not that big of a deal, but if you're short like me, it can be. If I had a box section around the, around the, the mini or around the rotisserie, um, I think that's more stable. But of course, I'd probably, my luck and my clumsiness, I'd probably be tripping over it a little bit more. Now on the back section, I added this uh, lower support that runs from the seat belts the lower seat belt bolts up to the rotisserie support. Now this also came from Dave Jaguar 66 and uh, it's needed. Either you support it there or you support the partial shelf. It does make a big difference. So I do believe that it's necessary on a mini shell. So those are just a few little tips with the mini shell. Uh, I hope that maybe helps somebody. As for my bracing, uh, I have finished it. I think all in all, it's fairly simplistic. Uh, perhaps when I gain a little bit of experience and I'm done with the floor and I'm done with some of these panels, I'll come back and I'll say, hey, I really didn't need this or I could have added this. Um, but for now, being new, I'm taking a few suggestions from, from you guys. Um, it's all removable. If I find that when I come in here to weld these seams, the new, the new floor steps and the new A post, then I can come in and I can remove these posts. Um, I can remove the cross beam, beam if necessary, and then I can put it back when I'm working the right-hand side. So I don't think it's too much. Um, I think it's fairly simplistic, you know, again. Um, but again, thanks to you guys, you know, that, that, this whole setup right here um, is really for alignment. So guys, that's where I'm at. Um, the rotisserie is finalized. The bracing for the floor is finalized. I don't have, I have to order the new floor pan. Uh, I'm going to order, uh, not the complete floor pan, but the left and right with the tunnel. That's what I'm going to replace. Um, I don't, because I don't have it, I don't want to start cutting out. Pro possibly I'll start looking for all the welds and how it's all attached. So I'll start cleaning that up and getting ready to I'll find all the spot welds and I'll get ready to do that, but I won't do it until I actually have the floor panel in, in, in hand. Um, but so I may go on to the subframes. Maybe I'll start cleaning those up. Um, 
I don't know what I'm going to do next. But, so this was fun. This was fabulous to start working with metal and, and figure all this out. Thanks to all you guys uh, for, for your input. Hey, and I appreciate any... Uh, Follow on con positive, constructive criticism. I'm an open book. Uh, I'll say thank you in advance. You know what? I'm going to give it one more round of turn just for, uh, just because I'm so pleased that it's working so well. Um, yeah, look at that. Quite nice, if I do say so myself. So I think that is. Uh, Definitely warrants a drink. <clears throat> Mountain Dew, one of the best fizzies in the world. Guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate any positive, uh, constructive criticism. And uh, you guys have a great day. Bye from Texas.